Hi everyone, my name is Dean from Dags Hub, and today I want to show you something cool that we've been working on for a while. We call it direct data access and it's going to change the way you interact with your data. So what I'm going to show you is a project that I'm working on, uh, which is a computer vision project. I'm basically estimating the depth from 2D images. So this is uh, my dog, Sunny, and this is her depth map. Now, this project has around 3,000 images as its data set. Um, they are tracked by DVC. And so if I wanted to interact with my data, I basically have two main ways to do that. And I'm going to hop over to a uh, Google Colab project that, that I have for this. Now, there are two main ways to interact with data today. The first is a CLI approach, and the second is an API approach. And they're both great for different things, but they also have some challenges associated with each one. Um, the CLI approach, basically uh, you store your data with versions either manually, for example, an S3 CLI, um, or using a tool like DVC to extend Git and track versions. Now, this assumes that you're pushing and pulling your data, um, and it usually is better for sort of the change management, uh, sharing your project with other people and doing things like that, but it is not as granular as we'd want it to be. So if you want to work with only a subset of our data, it's not as convenient, especially when you need to both download and upload things or stream your data and things like that. It's sort of a bulk action approach. Um, in the case of, of DVC, this also has a specific uh, challenge around if you're working, again, with an example of a million images in your data set, you want to add an image or two. You need to first pull your data set, then add those two, then push it back, which is, of course, not something that we want to do when the data set scale goes uh, up. The API approach, on the other hand, has a different set of, of uh, pros and cons. So um, you use libraries, let's say Python, and then they have API calls to download and upload the data. And this sort of is a more intuitive uh, API or approach to managing your data. Uh, it is granular, so it's usually file or chunk based, and it is much sort of easier to use. But um, there are two main downsides. The first is that the tools that use these uh, that provide these uh, APIs usually require you to conform to their interface in order to stream your data. Now, if it's a standard data set, it doesn't matter as much, but if it's your specific data set, that might cost a lot of development work in order to actually use this. Um, and the other thing is sort of it's the counter uh, point of the CLI approach. Uh, the API approach has a tendency to be a bit more messy, so it's harder to manage your project and collaborate and version your data. Um, and so what we wanted to do at Dagsub is we wanted to see if there was a way where you didn't have to get this trade off and you can basically get the best of both worlds. And this is where direct data access comes in. So the idea is um, with every Dagsub project, uh, direct data access just works out of the box. And the idea is you install the Dagshub uh, CLI, you add two lines of code to your Python project, and you can just stream your data. And so let's see how this works. So I'm going to install the DAGS Hub uh, client. Now, when you're seeing this, it is no longer in alpha. So you can just do pip install DAGS Hub and you'll get this uh, latest version. And while it's installing, I'm going to set up my uh, authentication so that I can clone the project that I just showed you from DAGS Hub. So I'm just going to run this, which is my username and password. And then I'm going to run this other thing where I put in my, my DAGS Hub password and I'm going to get an access token that is persistent. Now, I want to clone my project, um, which, which is what I'm, I'm doing right now. And you'll see that once this is done, in my file explorer for Colab, I see uh, a folder with my uh, project in it. When I open it, I have a source folder and I have some data um, but inside this data set, data folder, I only have, I don't have my process data, which is what I actually trained my model on, um, and which exists on the remote. And I only have two DVC files that are basically tracking the raw data set, which is not what I want. So I want to actually uh, sort of get the process data to start training on it. So I'm going to go into this uh, project. And then because I already installed the DAG sub client, I'm just going to run these two lines of code. And so this is going to guide me through an authentication process. So I do this and then I can copy this inside and paste it here. Um, and once I did this, I am 
now able to run commands like looking at this folder, which doesn't exist here. So again, source data process isn't here. If I run this thing, I'm actually going to see the context, uh, contents of this folder. Now, if I want to look at an actual image, let's say I want to look at this one, the 00640, I can put the actual path there. And when I run this, even though I'm using a relative path, this is not loading a, a, a URL from Dagsup directly, I can actually see the file. Now you might've noticed that this changed on the right here. The idea is once I downloaded a file, it exists and is cached so that the next time I call this, I don't need to re-download it. So we do smart caching for you. So when I open this, I'm actually going to see the specific file and only that file. So this folder has other contents, but I'm not seeing them anymore. So now we want to do the actually interesting thing, right? Like we want to train this model. So I need to run this into the Python code because I'm going to use the run command below to uh, run it. I'm going to copy these two lines of code, go to my source code training.py and then copy these just after all of the other imports, save this and we're good to go. So now let's run this. And what I'm using here is I'm using fast AI. So there's a short setup phase where basically I'm downloading the weights for the model, which are external for this project. And the moment that runs, this takes a few moments, but the moment that runs, I'm just going to start seeing uh, the training loop go. So let's wait and see it happen. So you can see that the weights have been downloaded and I'm now starting to train the model. Um, and you can see that the, um, the batches will start running and they'll, they'll just start downloading. And when this happens, you're going to see more and more folders and files appear here. Um, and that is because the specific batch is downloaded at every moment. So you see that one batch is already run. And if I refresh this, you'll see that there are now going to be additional uh, folders but each folder is not going to have the entire content. It's only the things that are needed in order to run this uh, current batch. So it's a smart download process. It lets you stream your data file by file as you need them. Um, and that's it. So DAGs of direct data access has a bunch of other awesome things uh, uh, that come sort of prepackaged with what I just showed you. You can upload data um, uh, and append that to a DVC track directory. Uh, you can mount a virtual file system and a lot of other cool things. You should totally check it out um, and start on GitHub. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.